Today I'm going to share with you how I look at my father's DNA and how by looking at them with some of the pro tools, I can easily figure out how those matches relate to my dad. So stay tuned. Here's my dad's DNA match page, and you can see at the very top, of course, that's me and one of my brothers showing up as one of his highest match. So what we're going to do is go over to the sort and change it to the newest to oldest. So it'll give us a list of uh, the matches and who's new and, you know, in the order that they come. So. As you can see, the very first one, we have this person, AG. Now you'll notice that um, it's been uh, blurred and anonymized and put into uh, initials, and that's by using a tool called Goldie May. So that way I can share with you and I don't have to worry about other people understanding who they might be. So here you see this match is a second cousin, according to uh, ancestry and it also shows 243 centimorgans. Now there are multiple relationships and that could be at 243 centimorgans. So let's have a little look at DNA Painter and see what it shows. So I've put 243 centimorgans in DNA Painter's shared centimorgan project tool and it automatically gives you the possible relationship. So 61% half great aunt or uncle, second cousin, half first cousin once removed, first cousin twice removed, and a half great niece or nephew. So there are other possibilities other than the second cousin that Ancestry identified. And if we clicked on the hyperlink that shows that second cousin on Ancestry, we would see those other relationships. But uh, this just gives you an idea of what the other relationships could be and also that there are possibilities there. Uh, you could go to the 28% or the 10%, uh, but those are less likely. So let's start with the most obvious. Now I'm back at Ancestry and I'm looking at my dad in uh, comparison with this new match, AG. And I can go to the shared matches and you'll notice that I have pro and that means that I have Pro Tools and that can help quite a bit. Here we are at my dad and AG and how they relate to their matches that they have in common. So I should point out that my dad is not only a second cousin to him, but this AG comes from his my dad's maternal side of the family. So no paternal uh, connection. And so now we're just looking at my grandmother's side of the family on my dad's side. So as we look here, you'll see that it shows the matches that he has in common with AG and they are sorted by my dad's top match to going down to his lowest match that he has in common. So that might not be very helpful because, uh, you know, of course I have, uh, top matches a lot of my family is in here and so there'll be distant matches for AG but we want to look at how what are AG's top matches that he has in common with my dad and we can do that by going to the sort tool this is a new feature from Ancestry and it really does help uh, understanding how those matches pertain to AG so let's have a look now I've resorted and the matches are now uh, in order of highest to lowest for AG. So the very first match is GG, which is AG's grandson or nephew. And you can see that he shares 1927 centimorgans. And for my dad, he uh, GG shares 74. So you can see how this is much better. So I can figure out relationships quite easily. Uh, by looking with Pro Tools and how they relate to AG. So the next is my dad's brother. And again, same situation as my dad. He's a second cousin. He shares a little bit more DNA with uh, AG than my dad does. And then below that is a person that I do know and how they relate. And uh, I can see that 
it that he is a relationship again on my dad's mother's side of the family and this person is a descendant of my great grandparents and so for ag he's a second cousin once removed now where it really might help is when we look at this one and we see mb is is ag's half cousin toys uh, half cousin or second cousin once removed and i know the relationship for um, mb and he comes from my great grandmother's mother and father so now we can exclude my gra great grandfather's side of the family and we can only look and then we only need to look at my grandmother's uh, mother's side of the family so we're ex starting to exclude relationships and we'll know exactly where to look now the, as you can see then we start getting into all the people that are in my family and not so much with ag so this means we're going to have to look at some of the lower matches and see how they might relate and and find some in common with people for them so just to make it very clear i can i know that ag is somehow related from my great grandmother's family not my great grandfather's family so it narrows it down now i know that my great grandmother's family was very large so let me share that with you so this is my tree this is my great grandmother and these are all of her siblings and her parents so likely because ag is a second cousin this is likely where we connect as he ag is probably a descendant of one of these people but it's possible that he's one for generation further back is where his connection is so that will mean me to looking at some of the other matches that ag has in common with my father now when i did have a quick peek those other matches don't really have very good trees i would consider more like twigs and sometimes you know you see those matches that have uh, one person in their tree and they happen to be private so it does make it challenging but I did notice that there were a couple of people that did have the name Clark in the tree. Now, Clark is a common name, and so it, that might not be the connection, but it's a, a it's a possibility, that's for sure. So it's going to, but it's going to require some tree building, and that's what happens when you're using DNA and or genetic genealogy is that you have to do tree building. Now, I would suggest that you create a DNA tree that you used kind of like your little sandbox to play and figure out how you might connect now my dna tree is private and unsearchable so no one can see it and no one can get confused by what might be going on in that tree so i encourage you to make another tree called your dna in common with tree and make it private and unsearchable and play around and start working on how your connections connect to your tree once you figure that out then you can add those people to your tree but in the meantime you can play and and work on it without anybody discovering your tree one final thought is you might be wondering how am i ever going to understand how that person connects to my father well without the goldie may tool i can see his name and once i expand on all of my great grandmother's siblings, children, and grandchildren, and great grandchildren, and so on, I probably will come across that name. And as um, another opportunity is maybe I might find out that when I build the trees, I find those other Clarks in the tree, and it all starts to make sense. So hopefully that's clear, and have a great day and happy hunting.